damn, that coin's been bearing it up lately. It's a bear. <laughs> hey, good afternoon. What's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in Windy Lauderdale by the Sea. Great day out here if you're a kite server. Let's see if this guy gets a little air coming up here. Got a little speed. I've actually seen one of these guys jump that pier before. Uh, not the safest thing to do. I'm sure it's not for beginners. <laughs> Don't try this at home. Oh, what a lovely day out there, though. What is it, about 80-something degrees? And uh, here we go. We'll take a look. Uh, no, 78 degrees. Wow. Lovely day. And let's see what's happening in our lovely markets today. Kind of sideways and down a little bit. I think the coin got it right as far as a bear when it comes to gold. And I'm going to do a quick refresh here. I did refresh it a few minutes ago. But, yeah, we're in that just below 1900 level. Um, kind of what I suspected somewhat as soon as the invasion, you know, it was not going to be a full-scale invasion. We'll talk about that in a little bit, what was going on in Ukraine, and uh, not kind of the picture that was painted. Uh, prices of gold and silver, uh, uh, platinum went up dramatically. Uh, gold probably more so over the news of a potential war because, you know, gold does move on news like that, all right? Uh, but let's take a look at the uh, what's happening here, a low of 1892. Uh, currently sitting at 1899 and a high of 1914 in overnight markets. We'll look at the 24-hour chart here in a moment. Uh, silver is sitting at, this is the odd duck out right here. I would think that, you know, it's kind of how uh, gold uh, uh, kind of uh, went down here. I would think that uh, silver would have gone down with it, but oddly enough, not. Again, I find this just a tad odd. Um, you know, on the other hand, silver didn't really follow gold up as much as uh, I thought it should either. It was kind of a, a little bit tepid, so to speak. You know, it didn't, you know, what, what do we see? What, what do we got here right, right now? We got 2436, the high in 2393. And what do we see? 24, maybe a little bit higher than that in this week, 2440 or something like that. I forget offhand. Uh, but again, not the kind of move that uh, gold make in that uh, above 1900 level. Uh, so what were the uh, ranges here? 2393 overnights to 2436, the high. Currently sitting pretty close to that high, and silver is up 20 cents while gold is down. Uh, funny too, platinum is up as well. And uh, what are we looking at here? 1078, the low 1093, and currently sitting right in the middle there, 1084 uh, with platinum. Uh, palladium's up, of course. I think with new Russian sanctions, you'll see the price of palladium and platinum go up. Uh, potentially because a lot of platinum and palladium does come out of Russia. Uh, we'll talk more about that sometime in the near future, see what kind of sanctions they're going to try to slap on the Russians. Uh, however, I think they're well prepared for any uh, uh, sanctions we stick on them at this point. And probably a better idea to be a peacemaker, not a war maker at this point, you know. But anyways, let's take a look at the overnight charts. And as you can tell, I'm a little bit tired of all this nonsense news anyway and, and these idiots that are in charge of the world supposedly. Uh, let's uh, see what happened 24 hour spot bid. This is the green. This is us currently right here. Uh, looks like in the morning here, uh, right before uh, New York open, probably in the London <coughs> Globex markets, I'm not quite sure. Uh, it looks like we had a big uptick here from, uh, well, it drifted overnight last night since the close. It looks like we drifted from 1910 uh, down to uh, that sub 1900 level. Uh, and then back up again to about 1905, where uh, again, kind of a uh, little yo-yo effect going on here. I'm kind of curious where this stabilizes that. I think it's going to be right in that 1900 range. Uh, again, great opportunity to buy. And I still think gold is cheap. Even if it drops another 50 bucks, I still think it's cheap at this level. Uh, down the road, we're all going to look at these prices and go, man, I wish I had bought more. At least I believe that. Uh, take a look at the silver price too, same thing. Uh, kind of drifted downwards overnight to uh, below that $24 mark, but oddly enough, look at this, right here in New York, or just about right before New York opens up, um, you know, we've got that, uh, boy, we got that spike upward quite substantially up to that $24.30 plus mark. Kind of an odd thing to do. I mean, look, you know, it's doing the opposite of what, take a look at gold. Well, gold kind of did take that spike up, but uh, uh, went down uh, uh, just as much or back to where it started from there. And uh, silver is hanging on to its own on this uh, uh, higher than 24 right now. It's kind of strange. Uh, interesting to see that behavior. Uh, I'm curious what's happening out there with silver. Well, it's going to be a short report today. I'm going to go into some of the products that I think are the best deals out there. Uh, what we have, as far as what we have, the best deals in my store here in uh, Lauderdale by the Sea, uh, commercial rare coins, which is one ounce gold bars. It's still the best deal out there. In small quantities, you can pick them up for spot plus $73. Uh, I believe that the uh, price of maple leaves are down to a spot plus $87. Again, small quantities, folks. 
And uh, what is it, $113 for buffaloes or gold eagles or something? Buffaloes and gold eagles are, I think, are around spot plus 115. Bars are by far the best deal. I would kind of stick with those. Uh, maples being uh, 73 83 well maples actually are quite a bit higher actually if you think about uh, 13 14 14 dollars higher than the bars uh, so I still like uh, the bars are the best deal out there same thing with silver too um, silver bars uh, are the best deal 100 ounce silver bars let's see let me just show you a picture oh, you all know what a 100 ounce silver bar looks like that it's still the best deal out there Valcombi's Sunshine's Johnson Matthews uh, the Swiss bars uh, whichever bars that you can get or you know well-made bars you can buy uh, for spot plus three dollars or less I mean that's a good deal man it's not the premiums have come down on silver right now uh, take advantage of it while you can uh, and also oddly enough and you don't see this happen 10 ounce bars are the same price as hundreds right now again while they're available uh, we are kind of selling a lot of tens because most of the time tens usually run about 25 cents an ounce more than the 100 ounce bars uh, but there we got good deals on them at the moment and uh, one ounce bars that come down about 25 cents an ounce at spot plus 370 i'm sorry spot plus 350 they were spot plus 375 Again, small quantities, plus 350 or more, not a bad deal at all. Um, and again, as, as you know, we advertise here at Commercial Rare Coins, local South Florida dealer. Uh, we advertise to beat Atmex, Jam, and SD Bullion on the uh, common, uh, I won't say common, but on the uh, 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 properly priced, lower priced bullion items. Uh, as far as uh, some of the, they carry a lot of items, I will say that. Atmex, Jam, and SD carry a lot of items, but most of I'd say 98% of the stuff on there is just overpriced foo-foo, if you ask me. The best deals they have even are uh, on their generic ones, tens, and hundreds. So if I was going to buy, again, if, if you didn't live near me and you can't come into my store uh, to buy from us, Monday through Fridays, 10 to 4, <laughs> I had to throw my plug in there. Um, <clears throat> these bars, and, and you don't have a local coin store, and again, I recommend you get a local coin store. They can usually beat the big online guys. Uh, like we do uh, we're competitive your local coin sh dealer should be competitive as well um, but if I had again I for the third time if I had to buy from Atmex JM or SD bullion I would stick with just the generic products only the other stuff is just overpriced in my opinion just overpriced baubles you know uh, shiny shit uh, uh, stick with products in silver that you can pay less than spot plus 350 for stick with products in the gold that you can pay less than spot plus I'm going to say $87 or thereabouts, maples. I still think eagles are too high at $100, $113 bucks over, and uh, buffaloes as well. So, again, stick with those products. As far as all the other products there, uh, pandas, you know, when you get into it, and I'm paying $40 for an ounce of silver, $37. Uh, 50. Now you're getting collector territories. You're no longer a silver stacker at that point. You're getting into shiny shit. Uh, and that's a whole different market. Uh, <clears throat> if you're going to invest, not invest, but uh, I hate to use the word invest. If you're going to try to preserve your wealth, uh, go I use try as well. <laughs> preserving your wealth, not try, you're preserving your wealth in precious metals. Uh, I would highly suggest that you stick with the lowest premium uh, possible bars and coins that you can. Right now it's mostly been bars. Uh, what should you absolutely avoid? Do not even get involved with this stuff. This is pushed and hawked by a lot of people, $20 gold pieces. I mean, they're beautiful, they're old, and, you know, they've lasted a long time. Uh, now, I'm talking about the early stuff, you know, the 20 libs here and the 20 saints, the early 20 saints, and uh, two and a half Indians. Oh, looks like someone's trying to reach me there. I'll call them back. Uh, this is all collector-orientated stuff right here. The premiums are really high. Uh, MS 64s. I'm not even sure. That's probably $400 over the price of gold, pretty easily or more. Uh, even your uh, lower grade 20s, like your 20 libs and uh, 63 or 62 or 61, or like this one, 20 libs and 62. Um, again, I'm not saying anything about the sellers on these things, but they're just overpriced. The only reason you want to buy these is if you're starting to collect coins and you want to put a type set together of 20 lib, you know, a 10 lib, a 10, you know. Uh, a five lib, a two and a half lib, that kind of thing. Uh, <clears throat> but if you're if you're uh, uh, if you're putting this stuff away uh, as a, a hedge against inflation or as a, it, there's way better ways to do it. Again, the premiums on this stuff are just really not what a silver or gold stacker wants to do. And uh, I know there's a lot of people out there that promote these because they they tell their uh, buyers, oh, well, these can't be confiscated. You know, when the government comes to confiscate your gold, they won't confiscate these uh, because they're collector coins. 
Uh, that's just bullshit, folks. Gold is not going to be confiscated any time in our lifetime, more than likely, unless there's an alien invasion and they want all our gold. I don't even believe that. There's enough out in the universe uh, that they could get on their own. But um, <clears throat> uh, no, no, you don't buy $20 gold pieces uh, because uh, you're, you know, that, that, that they might get confiscated. That's not a good reason. That's a bullshit reason that was used by telemarketers to sell overpriced premiums to people that didn't know any better. Uh, same thing when it comes to this stuff. See that MS-70 Gold Eagle? Uh, I mean, granted, there are people that collect these things by grade. I'm not one of them, not a big fan of it, but I, I'm cool with that. But should you be collect, Should you be paying large premiums for uh, bullion coins inside of uh, certified holders just because it's graded a 69 or a 70? No, not in my opinion. Again, that's hobby related. That's more collector related. Uh, if you're doing it for that reason, fine. If you're doing it because you think it's going to be a great way to own gold and silver, uh, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> and sorry, to, I'm a coin person too. I love coins. If you're buying coins for the right reason, I, I like to see that. You know, and the right reason you buy coins is not as a hedge. Gold and silver bars are a hedge, okay? Uh, not as a hedge, as a. Uh, uh, <laughs> you want to buy it as a collectible, something you enjoy buying and something you enjoy collecting. And uh, I don't know how anyone can enjoy just buying multiples of the same grade and the same date. And pay. Anyways, I can go off on this for quite a bit, but I know what I'm talking about. I was a coin dealer and a bullion dealer here since 1977, second generation. I know both markets very well. Uh, and if, again, if you're just stacking gold and silver, stay away from the collectible stuff. If you like collectible stuff, well, have fun with it and mix it up a little bit. Well, let's take a look at uh, what's happening out there in the uh, Dow Jones world, and it looks like everything's in a sea of red across the board pretty much, even our lovely gold, and uh, but silver's up, but they don't have silver here. Uh, so uh, kind of as expected, we're not seeing the big crash or the big, you know, I've been st talking about it for a while. If there's anything that the government and the Fed probably learned from 2008 is not to let these things pop overnight, not to let the balloon pop. I believe what they're doing right now is they're slowly letting the air out of this overinflated uh, bubble that we have. Uh, purposely, they're slowly letting out of the air. You know, I think if we, you saw some massive hemorrhaging in the, uh, these uh, three numbers right here in the red down a thousand points. I believe, I believe, I really do that the uh, plunge protection team, uh, that the Fed and the government would step in to uh, lessen that, uh, maybe even to buy some equities in some weird way that no one would know. <clears throat> just to keep that market from tumbling. I believe what is happening here is we're going to see a slow deflation in this bubble. Where will the Dow end up? I don't know. Well, it's going to be 25000 by the time they're done? It's tough to say. I don't see the economy getting any better, though, especially in the way they've been printing money and especially the way that they've been running the world, this country. Uh, let's take a look at Bitcoin price down overall. The one-week chart doesn't look good, 14.4% down. Uh, I thought in times of uh, upheaval, in times of turmoil, in times of uh, hyper, not hyperinflation, but inflation in these times that uh, Bitcoin was going to uh, uh, work better than gold, but so far it has not, folks. Um, it's a whole different animal. Um, again, not dissing Bitcoin, but for, for the longest time I heard from uh, uh, Bitcoin bugs that, uh, oh, it's going to replace gold, it's going to replace gold, it's going to replace silver. I don't think so. I <laughs> In fact, uh, I think it's just going to be relegated to a highly regulated uh, uh, market of, uh, you know, it's going to turn into a highly regulated money market, uh, glorified money market of some kind. Uh, and I know I'm going to catch some flack about calling it like a bank account like Mr. Munger did, but, uh, and I'm not doing that. The technology is way different, and I know there's a limited amount, but... Uh, like I said, once the major banks get into it, and once the regulators get into it, uh, that market's screwed, okay? Uh, we've already been through it with the gold and silver market, but the nice thing about gold and silver is you can stick it up their asses by actually owning physical. There's not much to own in a Bitcoin. Uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, yesterday's video. Uh, it was do as JP Morgan and get rich quick. Uh, <laughs> I say get quick, but... Uh, do his JP and get rich. You know how they say, don't fight the Fed? Well, don't fight JP. <laughs> I'm sorry. Nobody likes them, actually. Actually, if anybody should be in prison, too big to fail and too big to jail. They should be failed. They should be jailed, but they're not. So I'm going to live with this. Here, let me take a look at some of the uh, comments from yesterday's video. Uh, and uh, since this one's going to be a short one today, uh, Eric, uh, uh, roll call says, uh, keep stacking. Yep, absolutely. Uh, stack like your life depends on it, even if the wife or girl gives you shit. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny, Billy. Thanks for commenting. 
Uh, Cole Kosi says, a question about selling rounds and bars in Florida. Do you need to hold them for 30 days, uh, thus offer less for the coins, keep the good work? No, that's holding periods. There's two pe people that are allowed, supposed to hold in Florida, which is pawn shops. Even pawn shops that have a coin shop built in with them, if they do pawn, they're required to hold everything, even the coins that they buy. If you have a pawn license, you're kind of stuck. You have to, or a second-hand dealer's license, you have to hold everything, all right? There's no exemptions in some areas. Uh, but if you don't have a pawn license, you're not required to hold coins or bullion for 30 days. It's just not, you know, it's not in the laws. We're exempt from that. Uh, thanks. Good question, and I appreciate you asking that. Uh, hey, Russ, what's up? Nilly Nuss says, didn't JP with Rothschild Rock bring down the income? Yes, they did. Uh, thank you for that comment and astute uh, observation. Uh, thank you, Jesse. Donald says, alternative to comics, manipulate prices, simply average five national minimum stock. As for a few popular items, that is the price. Uh, it's kind of been interesting what, what Don is talking about here is that uh, using the uh, premium, adding the premium. And we did that in my first year of videos here. I would add the premium in when the premiums got really high. And kind of, you know, I was stating that that's the actual real price of buying real gold and silver, not paper gold and silver. And again, a lot of truth to that. Thanks for commenting, Don. Uh, good observation as well. <clears throat> Michael, uh, silver, uh, silver loving Lou. And Rick says, last time silver took off, I sold everything at 36 bucks an ounce. Well, good on you, sir. I like that. And you bought back at a lower level, obviously. It did not matter if Elvis or Larry Liberty was on the adverse. That's what I said. It didn't matter. They didn't care. Once, This is why you don't want to overpay for premiums on silver eagles or, or, or $20 gold pieces that are graded. You know, you just don't want to pay that stupid premium. You're never going to get it back, more than likely. Uh, thanks for making that comment, Rick, and I agree with you. Uh, poor Man's Investing says, good luck regulating the privacy of cryptos. Um, Man, I don't know, uh, poor man. I think that the, they are starting to regulate the, uh, they're regulating the uh, financial institutions that are dealing in them. So uh, the peer-to-peer -peer stuff, I don't know if they'll ever be able to regulate directly, but uh, uh, they are regulating it, man. You, no matter how you look at it, they are regulating it, sir. Uh, thanks for watching and thanks for your comment. Uh, Aaron says resale of uh, Atmex stamp bars tells a buyer, seller, this is what it says, purity weight, and that's good business, quality, not fakes or misleading. Uh, Brian, get over and stop being petty. Oh man, Aaron, I'm not being petty about it. I'm just saying, I'm stating the facts here. First off, Atmex uh, or whoever is putting Atmex is a reseller. They sell directly to the public, okay? Think about this for a second. They sell directly to the public, all right? So <clears throat> if you're another dealer that, that has to potentially hand someone a bar with Atmex's name and .com or phone number on it, uh, why would you hand a customer a competitor's business card on a bar? Uh, that's what I'm saying. It's not petty. I'm just not going to do it myself. You know, I'm not going to hand out uh, other people's bars. Uh, and if I do, I'm going to discount them pretty heavily. So uh, <clears throat> uh, as far as the stamp goes, they, you don't need to put your company name on it, AppMax or, or uh, uh, JM Bullion or whatever. Uh, you, all you need to do is actually put the purity and the weight on it. And Atmax don't make them bars. They just have made form with their name on it. It's a marketing thing. And I'm not here to market Atmax. There's nothing petty about it. I'm just not here to market Atmax. What smart businessman would? Uh, thanks for your comment, Aaron. Uh, just disagree with you there. And uh, let me take a look at Aaron's Nostradamus prediction. Good Friday, uh, 55.61 AG per ounce. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> Uh, April. Wow. Okay. I'd like to hear that. Uh, thanks, Aaron. Appreciate your comments. And as always, thanks for watching, uh, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, all federalized, centralized governments suck your productivity out and redistribute to the dependent. Absolutely true. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, the underwater cam that I show every morning is pretty cool, isn't it, Zane? You can watch it in the morning. It's a cup of coffee. It's almost like having your own fish tank if you got a good enough computer. Uh, White Buffalo asks, more silver is your, uh, more silver for your money. I understand what you meant, but what you really mean is more bang for your buck. Oh, yeah, more bang for your buck. I think we have to get back to sound money, and the more folks realize that gold and silver is the money and currency is just what we trade with more folks. Uh, absolutely. And uh, thank you, sir. I really appreciate that, White Buffalo. Keep stacking. Uh, John says, I think Russia will invade. <clears throat> All right, let's talk about this real quick. Um, I don't think Russia will invade. Now, you can call it them sending in peacekeepers and invasion, but it's really not. Russia was kind of backed into a corner. I mean, remember the Cuban Missile Crisis when the United States said, you know, no, you're not putting missiles in Cuba, and we were about to uh, uh, lay down the law and sink that ship, I believe, that they were bringing the missiles on. That we, we, we drew, a, 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 we drew a, 
a, a line in the sand back then. And can you blame Russia for not wanting missiles in NATO along their border? So the other thing that a lot of people, and I, I, I know way too much about Ukraine, um, <laughs> don't ask me, but I know way too much about it. I've been following it for the last several years now. And um, uh, it, Russia does not want the Donbass region. They don't want Lugansk. They don't want the Donbass region. They don't want it. All right? It's mouths to feed. The last thing Russia wants to do is invade, have to hold that territory against what would be a never-ending civil war with Kiev, okay? Never-ending. So they, that was the last thing that Russia wanted to do. However, had NATO troops come into uh, Ukraine and started marching towards that border, you would have seen the Russian troops pour across the border uh, on the other hand, and it would have been an invasion. Uh, and that's probably what the uh, U that's probably what the uh, NATO and the United States and UK were pushing for, uh, is to provoke the Russians into rolling across the borders. But tactically, Putin is a far better chess player than all the people in Europe and the United States. You know, the current administrations and the administrations in Europe, the Marxist liberal administrations there, uh, way smarter. Uh, Putin than all of them, and he played this tact tactically, tactically like a game of chess. All right, basically what he says: okay, we're not rolling and we're not invading, but what we're going to do is we're going to re recognize Donbass and Lugansk, which are the two regions along their border, as uh, individual states, like they did in Georgia. But in Georgia, they rolled across the border. In this case, they're not going to have to roll across the border. Uh, and the smart move was putting in what he called peacemaking troops. Okay not really an invasion. Europe doesn't want to call it an invasion, even though our, our, uh, our administration here in the United States and the Secretary Blinken uh, are trying to get something from this by calling it an invasion, okay? A real invasion would have been something serious. This is just simply uh, uh, Russia recognizing two independent states in Ukraine now. Listen, folks, the United States blew it for Ukraine. Ukraine should have never trusted the United States or the EU or NATO when it came to this. They should have been friends with their neighbors on both borders, okay? Now they've lost the Crimea. Now they've lost two states to become independent states now with no chance of probably ever getting them back. Uh, who was in charge, man? i, I got to tell you. All right, anyways, I can go long-winded on this. Uh, PD said to me, and this kind of got me a little bit, Canadian government was responding to the racist, fascist, and militants. You sound like you prefer fascists. Well, here, I wrote this just for you, PD, and uh, uh, <laughs> I thought about it for a second, and I think you're saying, I agree with fascists, and I don't think so. What is a fascist, by the way, and this is my definition? Well, PD, fascists support censorship of speech they dislike. Fascists support deplatforming views and language they disagree with. Fascists are all about mandates. Fascists support altering or eliminating constitutional rights they disagree with. Fascists are against peaceful protest of people they disagree with. However, fascists are okay with violent riots with people they do agree with. Uh, follow this. Fascists hate the truth if it does not align with their narrative. Fascists suck. All right, that's the UPD. Uh, I don't know how in any way, shape, or form that you felt that those uh, um, truckers up in uh, Canada were fascists in any way, shape, or form. I think the people that dealt with them, and again, I think I commented here, anyone that shuts down free speech and freedom to peacefully protest or donate to such people is a fascist, in my opinion, and I'm going to double down on that statement, PD. I'm sorry you feel that way, sir, but I'm not sure you're looking at things the correct way. Uh, thanks for commenting, and have yourself a nice day anyway. Um, Mr. Spandanuda, Portland armpit of <laughs> they, they deserve what they get. Oh, boy, I'm not going to argue with that too much. Um, oh man, getting a couple of phone calls here. Uh, Joey, not going to argue with that. Yeah, Washington's birthday now is President's Day. Come on, man. Washington was one of the guys that he was, a, what an admirable dude that guy was. He could have been like the king of the United States. They wanted to make him like king of the United States. And all he wanted to do is do his duty to his country, finish up what he needed to do, and he wanted to go back to being a farmer. And you know what? That's exactly what he did. He never messed with politics much again after that. What an admirable person that is. Uh, and then they, they, instead of having his birth, now it's President's Day. You know, there's probably 98% of the presidents I don't have any respect for on our president list, or not much. And some of them just no respect for it at all. Uh, but there are a couple presidents I respect, and George Washington is definitely one of them. 
Uh, and I think uh, we're correct. I don't think there will be. You know, United States was not going to put their dog in that arena right there for sure. We weren't going to go in there. Uh, that would have definitely uh, uh, screwed uh, everything up uh, uh, for the midterms for sure. Nobody wants war here, but they certainly did. Uh, anyways, I don't see a war going on there. I just can see a never-ending conflict going on. But uh, at this point, uh, I think Kiev screwed, and I think Kiev got screwed by NATO the European Union and the United States. I really do. What a, what a shame. Uh, Joe Saberio says, you're correct after regulations. Digital assets will become less speculative and will not be easy to make the kind of money people are making now. I'm not a Bitcoin fan. I'm a digital asset fan that has utility and will be part of the new financial system. We're going to need another asset other than precious metals to cover for all the dollars printed. Uh, very deep and interesting statement here. Thanks, Joseph. I really appreciate that. Mm. Oh, gosh. Wow. Uh, not quite sure how to answer that right now, but you know, everyone's talking about a reset. I don't like the idea of uh, using digital monies on a reset. How China was able to deplatform people, how Canada was be able to take people's money away, official, official digital currency to me is just the death of freedoms of people and freedom of people to, uh, or, or people not to be fearful about losing everything they have just because they say something unpopular. Uh, it scares me. Uh, thanks for uh, watching, Joseph. I really appreciate it. And you know what? I think that's really about it right now. Um, I'm going to call it quits for the day. And this is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals, as I always say every day. Think for yourself and always question authority. Uh, if you live in my area in South Florida, uh, please come by anytime between 10 and 4, Mondays through Fridays. Uh, we're open, and uh, we're here. Uh, here's our phone number, 954-493-8811. Again, we're brick and mortar. We don't do any online sales, and we don't ship anything else. So if you don't live in my area, uh, unfortunately, we can't sh send you anything. We can't deal on the phone or the Internet. Again, we are a face-to-face -face dealer only. And as you know, I recommend that you find a good local store to do the same with. Well, that's it. Thanks. Let's see what happens tomorrow, and have yourself a great day. Talk to you soon now. Bye.